Hey, what is up everybody and welcome to the Wonder Hobby G episode of Figure News. This is the spring 2022 edition of One Hobby. If you don't know what Wonder Hobby is, it's basically Good Smile Company's big event show they put on a couple times a year. And this one kind of came out of nowhere. I feel like a lot of people just didn't know this was happening. Now, there's a lot of stuff to go over. This is actually going to be broken up into two videos. Today, we're going to be going over everything that was shown off in the gallery. And then next episode, we're going to be talking about everything that you couldn't find in the gallery, but was shown off at the actual event. I'm just going to start from the beginning and go all the way through each and every one of them. Uh, might rapid fire through a few of them. There are a lot and there's a bit of a theme here, which you're going to notice pretty soon. But you know, this intro has gone on long enough. So let's just start talking about the figures. So we're starting off strong with the Spy Family Nendoroids. These were announced a couple of weeks ago, around the time when the anime started airing, and I think they're going to please a lot of people. We already know that these are going to do extremely well, and, uh, you know, Anya's looking really good. I think choosing the school uniform makes a lot of sense. It uh, also just makes her color palette a little bit better than if it was just in her normal black dress. But I really do wonder what faceplate she's going to come with because she just has so many, and someone's bound to be upset if they don't make the right ones. If anything, I feel like this character is perfect for that, like, faceplate accessory pack that, uh, Umaru got a long time ago. I feel like they can definitely do that with Anya, but I guess we'll see. And then, of course, they're making Lloyd. They're making the whole family, but Lloyd also got his prototype and painted form shown. And he looks good, but my only issue is that they're not gonna scale well with each other. I think that's something you have to recognize, that Lloyd and Anya are just gonna look very weird next to each other. And funny enough, there's a solution to this that will show up later in the video, but we'll get to that when we get there. Um, but, you know, as for Lloyd, I think they did a good job. And then, of course, they're making Yor, though surprisingly, she didn't get a prototype. Don't know why that is. I kind of would have imagined that they would make Yor before Lloyd, but that's not the case. So, now she is in her assassin outfit. The other two characters also are in their, like, professional attire. But I wonder if that means that this will be a very serious, in quotes, Nendoroid where she's not going to have any, like, goofy accessories or faceplates. I don't really know. I can't really make that call, but I'm sure it's going to look really cute. I can't imagine they mess it up. And I definitely think all three of these are going to sell extremely well. Nyanner's being turned into a Nendoroid is always going to be funny to me, considering she used to be, like, a 4chan shit poster, but, you know, whatever. The past is the past. Uh, I do think it looks pretty good. Her outfit does lend well to the Nendoroid form. I think it does look cute. Not really something I care about, but... Uh, I think it does look good. I'm sure this is going to sell really well, assuming like all of her fans want this. And I've got to imagine they will. So, but more exciting for me, I guess, because I actually do watch Iron Mouse sometimes, but she's also getting a Nendoroid. And it just kind of feels right. It feels good, like good for her. Happy that she's getting this. They're going with her like most iconic design. She has so many designs, but I think it makes sense that they're going with this one. No idea what they like will give her. Maybe a monkey. I think that would be pretty funny. Uh, maybe a bit too on the nose. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. Again, I feel like this will sell really, really well. Maybe even better than Yanner's. I don't really know how they compare in terms of popularity, but I assume Iron Mouse is a little bigger. All right, so when you see something like this, you think a scale is coming, but in fact, it is just a Nendoroid. So unfortunately, the Raiden Nendoroid is not a scale figure. I'm sure it'll look good, but I just feel like these designs lend themselves so well to being turned into scales. I'm sure the Genshin Impact fans would rather this be a scale figure than a Nendoroid, but I guess I'm really just speaking on my behalf, and I'm just assuming. But I feel like Raiden is a really popular character, so she definitely deserves more than a Nendoroid. And Zhang Li is also getting a Nendoroid. Now, again, I feel like when you look at this artwork, it just screams Mega Scale figure. I feel like it's a bit disappointing. I don't even play Genshin Impact, but I feel like when you look at these character designs, they're just screaming to be made into scale figures. But I do hope these two turn out well for their fans. So next up is Thanatos from Hades. Kind of just looks like Trunks here, if I'm being honest. I wonder what his accessories will be, though. I've only beaten this game, like, once or twice, so I don't really recall what else he does besides attack with his scythe. So besides giving him a couple of effect parts, maybe he'll come with other weapons for Zagreus, and I mean, maybe he can use them as well. But I think that would be a good idea to flesh out the Zagreus Nendoroid with other Nendoroids getting his weapons. It just makes a lot of sense to me. It's like the perfect excuse to get those other weapons to him. Even if it kind of takes away from Thanatos, I feel like it would still be a good call to do that. And surprisingly enough, they're also making Meg, which I think is the better call. I don't know, I feel like she's more popular than Thanatos. I certainly have liked Meg more in my playthroughs than Thanatos, but that's just my opinion. Um, I didn't pre-order Zagreus, so I don't see myself pre-ordering Meg. 
But again, good call. Don't really know what she'll come with. She's got a whip and she's got some cool effect parts she could probably come with. But if they run out of options, then again, just give her some of Zagreus' weapons and call it a day. I think that would probably make a lot of people happy. Every Helltaker figure has looked good so far, and I think Justice might be my favorite one. I just love those glasses and that oversized grin and the uh, jacket around her shoulders. It just looks really good, and I hope they keep making more of the characters. I think Cerberus is also getting a Nendoroid, but it's been a while. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's happening, though. But yeah, it's just a good design being translated into a Nendoroid, and it's working really well. So if they're gonna make Natsuki, and they already made Monica, then they have to make the other girls, right? I think that just makes sense. Like, at this point, it feels like they're committed. I hope I'm not wrong on that. I don't think I will be. I'm sure if there's enough demand for it, and these sell really well, then they'll make the other girls. But either way, a big win for you Doki Doki fans. Still haven't played it because the internet spoiled the entire thing for me, but I could be happy for you. It's fine. So Shovel Knight looks perfect. Uh, not really a big surprise to me, but I do like that he kind of looks like he's based off of the sprite more than the artwork. And I'm sure once this is painted, he's gonna look even better. My only fear is that he'll cost a bit too much. This has a lot of like appeal to like a wide, broad audience. But if this is like an $80 Nendoroid, which it could be because he's obviously a lot more bulkier, then it's probably not gonna sell that well. I don't know, I definitely fear that if they don't get the price right on him, it could be detrimental. As for accessories, I mean, he's got the shovel. I imagine he'll come with like a gem or two, maybe a couple, maybe some like dirt effect and then like a weapon or two from the game. I'd like the like propeller rapier. I think that would be cool. But either way, I think this one is shaping up very nicely. Okay, Papa Parade Minato Aqua. Honestly, don't think it looks that good. I think it looks kind of bad. She has an amazing scale coming in the future. So I can't really imagine why you would want this unless you just can't afford that one, which is valid, but I feel like this could just look better than it does. And the worst thing about it is that it costs 5,500 yen. So prices for pop-up parades, they just keep going up. I know there's like a hollow life tax on them, but this does not deserve that tax. Like her outfit is good, but I don't think it warrants the price increase again. We already just got a price increase, but I don't think this one is complicated enough to warrant that. On the other hand, I think Tokino Sora does look pretty good. Probably gonna be, you know, the 5,500 yen as well, though I didn't see that image floating around. Very forgettable, Hollow Live girl, in my opinion. I hate to say it, I just never see this girl around. Marine's Figma, you know, they've done a good job with the Figma, in my opinion, maybe even better than some of the Nendoroids, and their prices haven't been ridiculous. Like, they definitely could have taxed a lot more, so I'm thankful that they haven't gone overboard with the prices on these. Like, if Noelle didn't cost over 10,000 yen, I don't know why Marine would, but I guess it depends on what she comes with. Her design is just so strong that I feel like any figure she gets is going to look very good. Like, bare minimum, it will look good. And that holds true here. Okay, so Aaron Yeager, Titan Form, XL version. So these are the pop-up parades that are very big. One of these just went up for pre-order for Lucy from Fairy Tale. Now, there's a bit of, like, controversy, in a sense, about that one. Whether or not it's worth it. Um, I'll probably talk more about that in the pre-order video I'm gonna make, you know, relatively soon because it's the end of the month. But as I look at Eren, I feel like at the very least this one makes sense, and I think it looks a lot better than his original pop-up parade. Not only is he a titan, so it makes a lot of sense to make him bigger than most of your figures, but the detail actually sculpted into all of his muscles and skin, it just looks a lot better here. Whether or not this is worth it, I don't know. But I think this one is looking pretty good. Probably the best of the XLs I've seen. It's a strong contender at the very least, but it does make sense and I think it does look pretty good. We also got an update for Reiner's Nendoroid. Now, we don't get Eren, I don't think. Eren was shown at the event. But we did get Reiner, and I'm glad that Reiner is getting a Nendoroid. Character just deserves it. He's one of the best characters in the show. Honestly, he should get way more, but I don't understand why he was never popular enough to get figures. So at least there's a little bit of justice here, in my opinion. Now, what is he gonna come with? I have no idea. Don't think they're gonna mess around with the Armor Titan here. I don't see how that works. So all I can really expect are a bunch of, like, dread-filled, like, I wanna kill myself faceplates, and, uh, that's about it. I don't know. I hope they surprise me and they give us something good, but... At the very least, he gets a figure, and I think that's a win at the end of the day. Okay, so this is the only pop-up parade I plan to buy. I'm gonna judge pop-up parades completely based on how they do this, and yes, that's unfair, but this is the one I'm looking forward to, and it's probably the only one I'm gonna buy for a long time. Guts in his Berserker armor is just so cool. This shot is very iconic, and I'm kind of worried that it's not going to look anywhere near as good as this. Clearly this image is very photoshopped and like manipulated with lighting, but he was shown off at the event. He did look pretty good there. 
Um, I feel like the typical pop-up parade base kind of ruins the look of it a little bit. Thankfully, what they showed off was just a black base, so it kind of fits well enough, but I wish it was a little better or just not there at all. But it does look surprisingly well sculpted for a pop-up parade. I have hopes, not high hopes, but I do have hopes that this one will meet my expectations. It's not like I have a lot of options, though. It's either I buy this or I spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on something by, like, Prime 1 Studios or someone like that. And I don't have the money for it, so that's why I'm looking forward to this. Certainly this one image does look very badass, though, so I hope it does look good. I hope it looks somewhat like this. I hope it looks at least a little bit like this, and then I'll be happy. Okay, so this next announcement went up a little bit after the gallery went up, so if you weren't sticking around and looking for news, then you might have missed this one. But they're making some special strawberry-themed Miku figures for her 15th anniversary. Might honestly be one of the cutest Miku figures I've ever seen. It's just so precious in the way that they've themed this around the strawberries. The color scheme is like perfect. I love all the colors on this one. It just seems to be so perfectly made all around. I mean, look at the twin tails. They're so big and they're spiraling around. You can see through them. They've got flowers decorated all throughout. Really cute ribbons on them. Everything about this. There's so many little details that I could probably gush over for a little bit. But this will be going on sale soon, and more surprisingly, they're actually making a scale figure based on this Miku design. I can imagine a lot of people, including myself, are going to really count the days down to when we get to see this one painted. Even the prototype is probably going to look spectacular. It just really nails a lot of things that I look forward to in figures, and it has a really pleasant color scheme to it, so hopefully that is carried over into the figure. I'm sure it will be. Good Smile Company doesn't usually, like, slack on the Miku figures, even though they make so many of them. Really, what else is there to say, but I can't wait to see more. Junko from Danganronpa. Great Nendoroid choice. I feel like she makes more sense as, like, a scale figure, but again, I feel like they should just make a bunch of these. I don't know why there's not more Danganronpa figures and Nendoroids out there. It just prints money. I feel like the fans are salivating and ready to buy anything you give them. So it's nice of Good Smile Company to finally give us Junko. Hopefully there's more in the future. Um, there's a lot of characters to choose from. I think she looks really cute here. Hopefully her faceplates are just like insane crazy. I feel like they have to be. At least one of them uh, should give her a crazy face. And then just make sure it's painted well and then you're done. You made a perfectly good figure that a lot of people are going to buy. Hey, you know what sucks? Netflix. Anyway, here's Costello. Looks pretty good. Um, I don't have any JoJo figure. I don't know how I have not bought a single JoJo figure or Nendoroid. I don't know what's wrong with me. I do like JoJo. But she looks good. I think the joints are a little ugly. I know they're kind of like super poseable Nendoroids, and that's definitely going to be like a hit or miss thing for a lot of people. But even if I don't like the visual appeal of the joints, it makes a lot of sense for a JoJo character to be very poseable. So it's definitely the right call, but just not something I like looking at, if that makes sense. So Mary is finally getting a Nendoroid from Kakegaruri. It took a very long time. I guess they're realizing that people will buy this. I'm sure she's going to have some crazy, demented, weirdo faceplates. It's going to be perfect. And, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out, but it makes me jealous that Kaiji gets jack shit. But yeah, if you haven't noticed by now, this is clearly the pop-up parade and Nendoroid fest. I don't know why there's not that many scales here. There are some coming up, but I hope you like Nendoroids and pop-up parades because that is a majority of the announcements. So we're moving on to the Black Rock Shooter Dawnfall section. This is Figma Empress. I think she looks okay. It's a Figma. Not that much to talk about. They showed off a pistol, which is one of the most boring weapons you could probably give a character, in my opinion. Especially to someone from Black Rock Shooter, where all of their weapons are always, like, gigantic. Like, a huge scythe, a huge cannon, a huge sword. But here it's a pistol. I think it's kind of dull. But, I mean, we haven't seen everything yet, and she's not even painted, so I'll wait and see. Strengths, pop-up parade. Looks pretty good. I do like her character design a little bit more. But, without the giant arms, it kind of falls apart. I assume she has giant arms, I assume a figure will show that, but here is just kind of like her basic design and, it, you know, looks like she went through a shredder, but that, that's kind of cool, I, I like that enough. Color palette wise, not really my thing, I like the orange and black, but not so much the green bags around her waist, I don't like that color too much. I think it would fit in like the world, but as a figure on my shelf, I, I don't really like that color, so not really my thing, but I do like the way she looks, like her face, I think it looks pretty good. So Deadmaster has probably been my favorite of the redesigns. I don't know what it is. I just really do like the way she turned out. Maybe not better than the OG, but I do like this one. She looks very tired, um, and I like her hair swoop. I think the green hair looks very good. And that, like, cleaver sword. I think that's a pretty cool weapon. The asymmetrical horns. And then she's got that little red skull right under her mouth. It's good. I like this. I want to see more of it. Well, there you go. There are Strength's arms. 
strapped around her neck. I wonder how she like moves them around. Like, does she actually have to grab onto them or do they have like a mind of their own or they controlled a different way? This is definitely going to raise the price of it, unfortunately, but you know, you are getting more plastic, so it makes sense. Just having those arms, though, definitely makes this a lot cooler than the pop-up parade at the very least. And then I think to wrap up this Black Rock Shooter section, we're also getting a plastic model kit of the Black Trike. It's a good design, but I don't know what scale it's in. I gotta assume it's for Figma. Hopefully it's in scale with something, because if you can't use this with one of the characters, then that's just a big failure in my opinion. So I'm just gonna assume it's for the Figma, since it is made by Max Factory. Though Erika from A Couple of Cuckoos is getting a Nendoroid. Looks generally cute. Her eyes are definitely staring at me a bit too intensely. But as someone who hasn't seen the show, it does feel a bit basic. Now I have seen a little bit of this show. Reyna is a cute character. I guess it was a matter of time before she got a Nendoroid. She definitely fits this style perfectly. So if you're a big fan, then I guess you'll want to pick this up. Though Demon Slayer pop-up parades are still happening. This is Sanemi. He looks pretty good for a pop-up parade. I don't know this character yet. I don't think he's shown up really that much in the anime. I guess he'll be in the next season if I had to guess. But I've definitely seen worse, like Rengoku didn't look very good as a pop-up parade. But if this character pops off in the next season, then I gotta imagine Aniplex is gonna do something with this character. Or other companies like Mega House, I'm sure there will be more figures of him. But as a basic one, this looks fine. And there's also pop-up parades for Tenma and Tetsuro from Haikyuu. I think both of them look pretty good for pop-up parades, and I don't really recall ever seeing normal scale figures for them. Certainly a lot of Nendoroids for this series, but moving up to pop-up parades, I think, is a good call. If no company wants to take a crack at making scales, then, you know, this is the next best thing. So we saw this last time, and this is what I was talking about earlier with Anya. Why didn't they just do this for Anya? Because it would actually make sense if you had Anya be smaller than the other Nendoroids. Having a smaller Hinata, like, I guess is cute, but it doesn't really do anything. It's just going to cost a little less, which also makes me worry that, like, normal Nendoroids are going to go up in price if they're already trying to find a way to decrease the price. But yeah, I don't really get this unless they do it for very specific characters that should just be smaller than other Nendoroids. Like, it's technically a good idea, but if they don't use it right, like, if they don't use the licenses right, then I don't really understand the appeal. Like, the size of a Nendoroid is already very small, so I don't know why you definitely need the same character smaller, you know what I mean? I guess we'll wait and see, but I don't really know why you would need a smaller Hinata in this case. You know this is a weird one hobby when Elmo is one of the biggest surprises that they've shown off so far. And you know what? Elmo is rad, but who buys this? You know what I mean? Like, who is the demographic here? The small little kids who watch Sesame Street are not going to buy a Nendoroid, and I don't really know a lot of, like, adults who really think back too fondly to Sesame Street that collects the memorabilia. I just don't get it. This one feels really weird. And they're also making Cookie Monster. Now again, I like Cookie Monster as a design, but I don't really see why I would buy this or why a lot of people would. I'm definitely, you know, speaking on behalf of others. If you plan to buy these, let me know. I just don't understand it. I feel like, like the core demographic of Good Smile Company doesn't care about this, you know what I mean? But if they're gonna do this, then I want them to make Kermit. Not Sesame Street, obviously the Muppets, but if they can make Sesame Street stuff, they can definitely make Muppet stuff, and I will absolutely buy a Kermit the Frog. Okay, next up is Uta from Bubble, that movie that's now on Netflix. Still haven't seen it. I'll watch it eventually. Heard it's kind of boring, um, besides, like, the visual treat that it is. But, I mean, the design is cute enough. And she's also getting a Nendoroid, which kind of shows off her colors a bit more. Let's me at least appreciate her character design a little bit more, seeing her in color. The outfit is just falling apart, which is kind of interesting. I guess it's kind of to fit in with like the post-apocalyptic setting that I think the movie is set in. I do like the color of her hair, though the uh, top like antennas do look a little weird. It looks like you could grab it and then just kind of spin it around her head. You know what I mean? Or it might turn into a propeller and start flying away. Either way, I do think this one looks cute. So Toy Tech is making fruit basket nendoroids, and I don't think either of them look very good. We have Yuki here. Looks very flat looks kind of dead. Um, not really a big fan of it. And then Kyo as well is getting one. And again, I just feel like these two look so basic. And I feel like Fruits Basket is so popular to the point where they should get something better. Like, why did this get handed off to Toy Tech? Like, I'm sure this will make someone happy. I'm sure if you're like a big fan, they'll be fine with these. But I don't know. I feel like they're kind of dropping the ball here. These colors are very flat. And their faceplates look 
kind of basic, but I don't know. I feel like they could be a lot better than they are right now. Maybe the accessories will save them, though. Maybe the other faceplates will make them look better to me. But right now, I just feel like they're kind of a letdown. Sasaki and Miyano. I have no idea who either of these two are, and I'm just gonna move forward. They look fine. I don't know. Getting a little burnt out on Nendoroids, if you can't tell. So Summertime Render is one of the best shows of this season, apparently. I still haven't watched it. It's stuck in, like, Disney jail over in Japan, and it's basically just begging to be pirated or streamed on some, like, unofficial site, if I'm being honest. Gonna get around to it eventually, but as for this Nendoroid, I don't really like it. I don't know. I feel like her face just looks a little bit too, like, box-shaped, and it's just not appealing to me. Like, I feel like her design is very good, but in the Nendoroid form, I don't feel like it's translating that well. Love after world domination to Sumi Magara. Um, I guess this is like a dominatrix girl or something. I like her spike ball. The colors on this whole Nendoroid do fall a bit flat though. I feel like the shading on it is kind of like non-existent. Faceplate looks cute enough. Um, definitely need to see more about this one. And I guess watching the show would also make me maybe appreciate it more. But, but for what I'm seeing right now, looks fine. Nendoroid Sabaki, I do like her design. It's pretty cute. I like her hair and I like her outfit, but I don't really know that much about this character. So Tokyo Revengers continues to get Nendoroids with Baji. I think this is like the fourth Tokyo Revengers. I'm sure they're just going to keep making tons and tons of these. So if you like the show, look forward to this though. I have seen that Mikey didn't turn out that good. Been a lot of mixed opinions on him, though it doesn't really seem like his quality control was really up to par with what it should be, unfortunately. So hopefully that was a one-time thing. I don't really know why that happened with Mikey considering he was so popular, but it does make me a bit concerned for these other figures. So this one is not surprising at all. Sophie from Atelier Sophie 2 is getting a Nendoroid. She's got a great design, though I feel like, just like with Ryza, it really lends itself more to scale figures. But I'm sure this one will look really cute too. Here we have Ram from Guilty Gear Strive looking really good. Maybe one of the best Nendoroids I've seen today. But that doesn't really surprise me because the Dizzy Nendoroid was also very good. I mean, when you have character designs as strong as Guilty Gear does, they're gonna lend themselves well to being turned into figures. Surely will cost a lot of money, right? You're getting two giant swords, those two devil bats, the big hat the coach is wearing, her outfit in general. There's just a lot of detail on this one. Not gonna be surprised at all if this costs 80 bucks, and I think it honestly will be worth it. I certainly do like this one a lot. Hey, it's a proper scale prototype figure. Who knew they were in here? Neptunia wedding version. And what a wedding figure it is. Honestly, this looks pretty beautiful. Her dress is beautiful, she has wings, and she's got a great sword with a bouquet on it. Not to mention she's standing on top of a bunch of crystals. Now, no idea how this is going to be painted. I assume there'll be a lot of white and purple, but that can't be the only two colors, so I'm definitely interested to see how this will be painted. I also kind of like how this doesn't seem like it's going to take up a ton of space despite being a wedding dress figure. You know, sometimes the dress just goes all over the place, but this one seems to be a lot shorter and it kind of maintains itself inside of like the ribbon or the cloth that's kind of surrounding the dress. I like that about it. Plus, she's just really cute. Her face looks so happy. Considering this is Good Smile Company, I'm pretty sure this will turn out fantastically. So looking forward to seeing more of it. I've been looking for an excuse to get a new Kirby Nendoroid. The one that comes with the Robobot is just kind of bad. I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about, but it gets sticky like immediately. Anyway, uh, they're making a 30th anniversary edition of the Kirby Nendoroid which I think implies that it's going to be like 99% the same, except with a little bit of like different detail. You can see that his eyes are different. The star rod that he comes with is glittery instead of like, you know, just a shiny plastic, which I actually don't prefer. I think the normal look of it is better, but not so much that this is bad. I don't mind it. I just think the normal look is what I'm used to, so I like it a little bit more. As much as I do like this and will probably get just because I like Kirby stuff, I really hope this means that Waddle Dee has a chance of getting re-released and they make King Dedede at some point. I don't know if they think they can't do King Dedede properly, but I hope that gets made. And Waddle Dee is just so expensive on the aftermarket for some reason, so they really need to re-release that guy. But yeah, Kirby 30th anniversary. I hope he actually comes with something different but I am expecting it to just be basically the same thing with like different paint and stuff. Okay, I didn't see this coming. Pop-Up Parade Shepard and Garrus from Mass Effect. Sure, why not? A2 from Nier, short hair version Nendoroid. Not that exciting. Honestly, out of all the Nier Nendoroids, 
A2 is my least favorite. I feel like they didn't really nail her face. And that upsets me because she's my favorite character. So I didn't end up getting it. I didn't want it. And this doesn't really sell me on it either because I actually like her with longer hair better. All I can really hope for is that the faceplates are different and the weapons are different. I don't really know what they're planning for with this thing. I hope it's not as lazy as just being short hair. I'm assuming they'll do a little bit more, but I don't have the other one in front of me to really like compare the two. Sackboy Nendoroid honestly looks like a perfect fit. Very adorable. Feels extremely late to be happening. I don't think many people care about Sackboy as much as they did back in like the PS3 and even maybe PS4 era, but better late than never, I suppose. At the right price, this could do very well, but a lot of the PlayStation Nendos don't really sell that well, or they make too many of them. I always see them in, like, the bargain bins. I always see them in stock. Hopefully this guy's fate isn't the bargain bin, because he does look pretty good so far. This is a good one regardless. I don't care what happens in the aftermarket. I like it. Rin and Len are getting Miku Symphony Nendoroids, so this will go well with the other Miku that I think is out right now. I know there's like a big scale figure of her that isn't out yet, but I'm pretty sure the Nendoroid is. Expect it to be elegant, expect them to have a lot of white and gold. Honestly, expect them to look pretty good. I think the Miku did look very good, and I'm sure these two will look very good as well. So, looking forward to seeing their prototypes in the future. So this is the Racing Miku 2010 version by Kentaro Yabuki. Basically the guy who did To Love Ru. Love that artist. Honestly, I did enjoy that series as well. Um, this Miku does feel a bit basic, and I'm not really sure why we're going back to 2010 with the design, but I guess it's a fine design. It does look very vibrant, and I do like the color scheme on it. I wish her hair wasn't like a plasticky look, but had like the matte finish instead. The face definitely carries it for me, considering it is Kentaro's art. And I definitely like it, but it's probably not going to be priced the way I want it to be. Like, it checks off a lot of things for me. Like, I like the color scheme, I like her face, the pose is cute. It has a very, like, playful charm to it. But if it was anything over, like, 14,000 yen, I would definitely be checked out. But the quality is definitely here, so I'm definitely waiting to see how she's priced. So this is the Racing Miku 2022 version, a skin-tight suit for Miku. Not something you see very often, but I do think it looks pretty good. I've seen artwork of her, I think the costume is mostly black with like a white top, and it seems to be a pretty popular design. Her big flag ends up kind of just looking like a giant scythe to me with the way she's holding it. Uh, I can't get that out of my mind. I'm sure when it's colored, and it's probably going to be some like rainbow color or something, it will not look like that anymore, but right now in the prototype phase, it definitely just looks like a weapon. I do like the pose, but I don't like the support beam. It's a very big, obvious support beam. I hope they find a way to make that look a little less ugly. I'm sure it'll look a little better once it's colored, but right now, a bit of an eyesore. But uh, yeah, I do like this Racing Miku's design. I think it's pretty strong. I'm sure we'll see more of it, honestly. I feel like they'll come back to this one, considering how popular it does seem. And it's pretty hard to deny the appeal of a skin-tight suit, if I'm being honest. More Miku, the Rose Cage version. We've seen the art card of this a while ago. It had a very pretty color palette to it, and this figure is shaping up to be gorgeous, in my opinion. It really does look very pretty and cute. I think this is one to look out for. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna like it. I love the way they did her twin tails on this one. There's so much volume to it, and I bet it's gonna look super good depending on the way they paint it. I really hope it's not clear plastic. I don't want them to do that. I hope it's matte, and I just hope they pick the right shade of blue for it. I'm really hoping that the colors on this one are just super vibrant and just like the artwork from before. There really is a lot of like intricacies to her outfit. There's a lot of like little frilly parts, flowers in her hair. The chair itself is very ornate. I think this one looks really good. This might be one of the best figures they've shown off today. And depending on your taste, this might be a must get. Not a must get for me yet, but I do really like it. Messy hair Miku, asymmetrical twin tails. This one is adorable. I don't know what it is about the messy hair that's winning me over so easily, but I really do like the sculpt of this one. Her outfit does look very cute as well, though I'm not sure what the colors will be. That'll definitely be a deciding factor if I like it or not. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't care about this at all. We're gonna move forward from the sitting down Nendoroids of Kirito and Asuna. Okay, XXXHolic is getting Nendoroids for Yuko and Kimihiro. Never seen it, and I think these look fine. I mean, the girl does look very interesting. I think her outfit looks pretty cool. And the chair she sits in will be a great accessory to come with. But again, I don't really know a lot about these two. But hey, making Nendoroids for this series, so good for the fans. Main and Abyss continue to get figures with Faputa here. Now, I haven't seen this character yet because Season 2 hasn't aired. But I feel like I keep seeing this character, so I gotta imagine they're pretty popular. Maybe I like them, I don't know. But I think fans will probably be happy about this announcement. 
And then of course, more Made in Abyss. We're getting Prushka from the movie. She didn't really leave that much of an impression on me past what happens in the movie, but I do like that movie, so it's cool that they're making merch from it. She's got a really big head now that I'm looking at this, and I don't remember that little animal's name, but I like it, so... This one looks good. Uh, I'm sure if you collect the Made in Abyss and Enderoids, you probably want this as well, so good for you. Angela from Expelled from Paradise is getting a pop-up parade. I feel like this character deserves better scale figures. I don't know, I feel like this doesn't look very good. And, you know, anything that Saitom makes into a scale figure usually ends up very good. But unless they're making a sequel to this movie, then I don't really know why this is happening now. I don't know, bit of a pass for me. Alright, we got a really cute one here, Miku Nakano date style version. So the quintuplets, Miku is the big winner in terms of Good Smile Company because they're making a 1-6 scale of her. You put a cute anime girl in some fashionable clothes and I'm gonna like it, so this is definitely a big ol' thumbs up for me. Plus, I think I'm just tired of seeing all these quintuplets in, like, their school uniforms, wedding attire. I just don't really care about that. I like that they're doing this. And, uh, you know, considering it's Good Smile Company, this could be one of her best scales, if not her best scale. Also, the headphones with this outfit makes a lot more sense than putting them on, like, a wedding dress or a kimono or whatever these companies are doing. So, yeah, this design just works, like, in every single way. Very cute figure. Really hoping to see more of this one soon. Big ol' pop-up parade for Natsu, the XL version. I feel like there's not that much to talk about here. It's a big pop-up parade. Since it's colored like this, I'm sure we'll see it very soon up for pre-order, and then we'll talk about it more there. But for now, I'm gonna move forward. Lancer, or Kukulin, is getting his Nendoroid, finally. Again, I think I said this last time, I just was very surprised that this guy did not have a Nendoroid yet. And I really love the blue. I think the blue on this guy looks so good. I think they painted him fantastically. And his shiny red lance looks really good too. You know, we don't get to see a lot with these Nendoroids in the showcases, but this one is kind of impressing me for some reason. I just really like the paint job on him. Okay, so this is a Nendoroid for Pretender slash Oberon. I don't know who this is. I'm sorry. It kind of looks like the art style for March comes in like a line. I'm assuming that's what it is. I think I'd rather see this character in a scale figure than a Nendoroid. But considering I had no idea who this was, I gotta imagine they're not the most popular Fate character, but maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't really keep up with Fate too much to know. But yeah, interesting character choice, I guess. Fate's Mash under the same Sky figure. I feel like this one has already gone up for pre-order, like, very recently. I could be wrong on that. But either way, I think this one is kind of precious. I really think she's cute. And I just love the elegant aura that this figure has. The outfit kind of reminds me of something you would wear to, like, a fancy dinner party or a ball or something like that. And I just really like this outfit for her. The hair is on point, and I like her pose. It's like she's reaching out to me. It's very cute. I like this one. And then Saber is also getting a figure under the same line by Aniplex. And again, I really like the outfit on this one too. Maybe it's the giant robe, or maybe it's like the really elegant white dress that she's wearing. But I think it works a lot. I think it looks really good with the sword too. Despite how long I've collected for, I don't have any Fate figures. I like the series enough, but I just never jump on any of the figures. But these look really great to me and a little bit different from what I'm used to seeing. Depending on their price points, I might be interested in this. I'm not sure yet, but I really do like it. Prisma Ilya's Chloe, or maybe it's Chloe, I'm not really sure. Kuro is getting a Nendoroid. Looks solid, looks cute, don't really have that much else to say. I'm just, you know, more surprised that it took this long. How do you pronounce this character's name? Akruid? I hope that's right. Tsukihime, whatever. They're making a figure of her. Again, another character that I feel like should have had a Nendoroid by now, but they're doing her justice, they're making a Nendoroid. Looking pretty cute so far. Moving on. Nendoroid dolls for Omega Ryo and Omega Ray are being made, but don't know who these two are, and I don't really collect the Nendoroid doll line, so I'm gonna move forward. Pop-up parade Albedo, so you're getting an affordable figure for Albedo. If you can't afford any of her, like, 10,000 scales, then maybe this one's for you. But I don't know, hard to get excited about it when there really is that many Albedos on the market already. Modroid Deerstalker RXR. Looks pretty cool. No idea who it is. Nendoroid Rilakkuma, holy shit, based as fuck. Honestly, I do like this one a lot. I think it's really cute. And he even comes with that little bird whose name I always mispronounce. Like, I think it's like Kiratori. Either way, I'm not memeing. I do genuinely like this announcement. It's not the best one we got today, but I do think this is a great Nendoroid pick. Super Crooks, Johnny Bolt, and Gladiator are getting pop-up parades. Never seen it, but I've also never seen figures of these two characters, so pop-up parades are a good fit for them. Okay, now we're getting into Uma Musume Pretty Derby, starting off with Twin Turbos Nendoroid. 
Not a character design I've ever seen, if I'm being honest, but I really like her hair and her crazy spiral eyes. Plus, she's got shark teeth. I think if I've seen more of this show or played the game, I would definitely like her. Full transparency, I've only seen episode one, so I'm very much a noob in that regard, but I do plan to watch more. I did like it, I just kind of got sidetracked and then never went back. But uh, yeah, the character designs in this series are good. I do like a lot of them, but again, I'm just not that familiar. I think this Nendoroid does look very nice though. Daiwa Scarlet, as someone who hasn't seen a lot, is my favorite character design. I really love her. I'm looking forward to Max Factory's scale that they're making. I might get that despite being very like uninformed on this series, but they're also making a Nendoroid for her. So my eyes will be on the lookout for this one as well. Tokai Teo, I think this is the main character. I forget, she's fine. Not really that interested in her, to be honest. Majira McQueen is also getting a Nendoroid. This is another design that I do like but I'd probably save it for a scale if I had to, you know, make a choice. And then Oguri Cap is getting a Nendoroid as well. Never seen her before. And she looks all right. A little bit basic in my opinion, but maybe she's cool. I don't know. Oh, and there's also Rice Shower, who I believe is pretty popular. Not necessarily my thing, but she is pretty cute. One seven scale MX Chan. I think this is a mascot character for Max Factory. I don't feel like I've ever really seen her though. Um, I can't recall. I think this character has black hair from like artwork I've seen. But other than that, I'm kind of clueless. She's got big booba. Um, she's pretty sexy. Doesn't really look like she's wearing too much around her like torso and waist. But that's kind of hot. And I like her giant ponytail. And now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, I'm pretty sure the character designer for this is from like the Atelier Ryza games. I think they designed Ryza, which is why I kind of just like already like this character design. But I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure. But if I had the artwork on hand, I could probably like guarantee confirm that or not. Either way, looking forward to seeing this one more. I want to see her painted. Maybe I'll even want it when it is painted, but I don't know yet. Figma HK416. Favorite thing about this is her hat. I like her little beret. She's got a pretty interesting face design too, like that weird marking under her eyes. Definitely gives her a bit of a distinct look, which I like. But yeah, just a solid Figma from Max Factory. So this is the next girl in the A to Z line, F01. You know, she's not really rocking the most interesting weapons that I've seen on this line of figures, but I think it's made up for with her outfit. I really like the outfit on this one. I like the overuse of belts for once. Normally that would look pretty stupid, but I like it here. I like how it's keeping up her jacket that's like barely on her. And she's got a couple around her waist that kind of keep her boobs in check. I don't really know, but I kind of like how that looks for some reason. I also dig the color scheme on this one. You know, despite being black and white, I think they did a great job shading it so that it doesn't just look like you know, a two-tone, very boring-looking figure. I think they did a great job here. Figma Hamet from False Lander. Now, we have a scale figure to look forward to from Wing. I don't think that's out yet, and I don't think it's even up for pre-order, but I thought that one was beautiful. I really like that one. It might have needed a few touch-ups, like the skin tone, I think, was a little too light. But either way, I think it just works better as a scale than a Figma, so I'm not really excited for this as much as I do like the, like, female Anubis look that this figure has. I'm sure it'll look great, but it just doesn't have the same appeal to me that that scale figure did. And okay, if you don't mind, I'm gonna rapid fire these last few because I really don't care that much. So we got Nendoroid doll, warm clothing sets, Nendoroid Mouse King, and Toy Soldier. Doll sets for the diner, looks kinda cute actually. A bunch of shoes for your doll, Nendoroid doll height adjustment. So if you want some to be shorter or taller, that's actually kind of a good idea. Maybe they should try that for Nendoroids. Nendoroid more skateboards, okay. Nendoroid more hammocks, so more colors for the hammocks. Nendoroid more face parts case for sharks and whales. Nendoroid more Nendoroid pouch Neo Cream Soda actually does look kind of good. Nendoroid more acrylic stand decorations for the ice cream shop. Nendoroid more collections ice cream shop, so actually sculpted parts. Nendoroid more containers, okay. Nendoroid more backgrounds book one. And Nendoroid more puzzle base. All right, and that's gonna do it for the gallery. Hopefully you guys liked Nendoroids and Papa Parades the episode because really there was barely any scales to go around. Normally they do a bit better of a balance between everything, but this time it really was the Nendoroid show. Don't fret though, because next time we're going to be exclusively talking about scales pretty much, unless I missed like a Nendoroid or two, but I think this was everything and that episode should be much more interesting if you're into scale figures only. So. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Look forward to part two. If you want to support the channel, be sure to subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and you know, leave me a comment if you want to talk about anything that I talked about today. I'll see you pretty soon for the next part, and until then, take care. See you later.